Do you ever wonder if homeschool is a good choice for you? Comment below with your questions, concerns, or ask about a setting up a time to discuss how to start your homeschool journey. Okay. Well, and, and kind of, you know, along with what you were saying, I was thinking about just the idea of learning, what what is learning, and like what you're talking about of taking real world experiences, and then how do you take that to the classroom to make the learning happen? So, and you talked a little bit about simulation learning. Can you just tell a little bit about how to how you utilize that as a professor, taking that real world experience, you know, from Xerox and the other, you know, small businesses and startups that you were working with? And like you said, you were dealing with like psychology, with, you know, therapy, like with your clients and things. <laughs> how did you turn that into a syllabus, you know, like? Do you have any examples? Or? It, it's interesting, you know, the first time teaching, it was uh, when, when you come in, you know, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and I've learned a little bit about what it means to go get an undergraduate um, education degree, too. You know, like people that are, end up in education as instructors or admin, whatever it might be, you know, what did they get, which, which I didn't have? I have two degrees in engineering and an MBA. And so I don't have anything that had to do with psychology. And I always found it fascinating, you know, and that, that's just how I'm cut is I'm always interested in motivations and responses with people, frames of mind and, and whatnot. So that's how I approached the students and uh, treated them as equals. I told them, I said, you're not students, you're just getting prepared to work. I said, by the end of one of my uh, classes, you should be able to do something. And I'm not sure if you've ever seen it, but sometimes on on certain news shows or other TV shows, they'll interview people literally with their, um, out, out of college with their gown and cap on, and they'll ask them a very basic question about some topic that they got their degree in and they're not able to answer it. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but it can be quite comical. And one, one example that I do remember clearly was they had taken some engineering students that were literally just came off the, you know, whatever you call it, the stage or base, whatever, and, and they'd come off, gotten their degrees, and they're all happy, and they'd ask them, how does a light bulb work? And these were engineers, and they couldn't explain how a light bulb worked, you know? And I just want to give that, I don't know if you've ever seen that, but, you know, it's a man on the street or a person on the street, woman on the street, interviewing them, you know, and it's, it's, it's left in a lighthearted way, like, you know, you should, if you have to have an engineering degree, you should know how to do a light bulb. Well, that carried with me in life. I said, you should be able to do these things. So that's how I taught. And so when I came in, I said, what is, yeah. how close can I get these students from where they are to being competent, comfortable with, you know, the, that which they're learning. And I did, I do come from a technical, a little bit mathy background. So that's why I kind of ended up being the technical mathy professor in the department. Um, you know, they, they asked me to do a number of things and I had great fun trying to take things in statistics and break it down in, into the logic and motivation of why do we even need to know this? Because I've sat through probably five, six uh statistics at least statistics course in my education and it i always sat there saying this could be done better this could be done better so so the simulation was as close as i could is to giving them a job an actual task where you know let's say in the world of business that you either make money or you don't make money with your efforts okay so that that's some measurement of business school or business people about what happens so i went I taught one semester without it, only one semester, and I immediately was talking to publishers about it, and I found uh, from a couple of publishers some very good simulations, and the way that uh, my uh, course load lined up, it was very, they were very generous to me when I went in. They gave me junior and senior level classes, and they actually gave me the capstone class to teach uh, for the business school, you know, so this is the last, supposedly, technically the last class that brings all the concepts together because I had a pretty broad background. And uh, what I ended up having is I have a junior class and a senior class. I used a simulation in a junior class, a computer simulation, where they ran a business alone, but with everybody else, but they were, they were all measured on their own for that. They could sit right next to each other. It was a great system where they were fed, uh, they were fed different data for the rounds so that they could sit next to each other. They couldn't copy each other, but they could get the concepts with each other. And that's what I really loved about that simulation. And then when they got to be seniors, they came into my capstone class. I had another one where they worked in, in groups of three. And both of these products are internationally deployed. They're all over the place uh, from big publishers. And, uh, and that way, 
I know that they were dread like, the the the, the um, reputation developed, and the students would kind of dread my class but love it at the same time, and that's what I wanted. I wanted students being really challenged, they shake their foundation a little bit. Don't don't spew, spoon feed them, and and there was a contingent mm-hmm. there that would fall to pieces. And, and it wasn't the worst students all the time. Sometimes the best students had been going through and being able to spin back what they had gotten. And so I had, mm-hmm. it's critical thinking, logic, uh, you know, in, in basic business sense. Yeah. And I, I loved, I loved it. And I know that a good contingent of students, I think I could say 20% of them really loved it. When, when you're, uh, when you're teaching, you have to start thinking about it in about thirds of your class a third it doesn't matter what you're teaching and what you do they're just there and they're going to click that one off it's either that's what they perennial do with all their courses or it, this one particular isn't the one that they're going to really care too much about i don't take it personally and when you don't do that you have a much better repu- or, um, relationship in the classroom with those students anyway you're like okay for, for whatever reason this doesn't mean too much but then there's there's 20 percent at the top that really love it dive in and what I was getting were students that weren't 4.0 students. They weren't great students. And they finally got a hold of something where they were using some of their knowledge. And about 20% of students would go crazy with this. And uh, they would challenge me sometimes with some of the places that they got into in the simulation that I might not have even seen. And then you have pretty much 60% in the middle that are you're just generally going through it. They'll you know, ask for help if needed or you recognize it. They'll take help. Put it that way. So, so for the simulation, for me... Uh, just to give you an example about some of the feedback, I, I was actually having dinner with another professor out, and uh, one of my past students came in, and, and they didn't know this other professor. They came in, and he had this student had graduated. He came up to me and said, "Oh, you know, Professor Gregory, which I, I still never get used to, because I'm just I'm a, I'm a person sharing information." But Professor Gregory, that simulation class was the best one I ever took at at the college, and I had been sitting there talking about the other professor about. A, um, about the possibilities of using simulation out was the two of us, he and I, uh, developing a product of simulation. And so this student came in and just nailed it. It was like, a, if I looked like I paid the person to come in and say that, I mean, it, it, it was, it went off so well. So the other professor, of course, is laughing really hard. He says, Yeah, I get it. I get it. He says, so, so anyway, that's where simulation. You know, and in teaching, there's, a, there's a, I think, a few set rules that you should understand about education. Parents should understand. Students should understand. Not everything's going to be interesting. You're not maybe going to do super great at everything. And that's okay. That's a balance. And that's a little bit more about how I was as a student was I, I didn't consciously pick and choose, but uh, it ended up by my last year, what I ended up doing then ended up being my career for probably like 12 years. Uh, and, and I had had some really, uh, really good co-op experience because between my junior and senior year, I had worked for a big company where I actually did it, you know, I actually did what I was learning. And that branched into a pretty, you know, I, I was happy with what happened for the next 12 years. So anyway, maybe that was a little bit, you know, long path to the to the story. But that's the example of where simulation can be used in a couple of ways. And. And uh, the students came from, I had them for quite a bit of time. I had them through two courses where they did one individually and then they did one as a team. And and so, uh, you know, I think I had a good thing going. It sort of developed naturally. I, I don't know if I could have even planned it to have gone that well together. Yeah. Do you ever wonder if homeschool is a good choice for you? Comment below with your questions, concerns, or ask about a setting up a time to discuss how to start your homeschool journey.